Oh, I am certainly flabbergasted. Seriously, though, this, this, this came way from left field for me because literally just yesterday, just yesterday we were talking about how we felt like the Ravens were just so infatuated with Le'Veon Bell and how they loved him so much and you could tell by how they, they just kept trying. It wasn't working, but they just kept trying it and trying it and trying it. And they, they had been force feeding Le'Veon Bell and it just, it wasn't it. And even though, like, with Le'Veon Bell, we were, we were all hoping. We were all, I know everybody didn't agree on the signing initially, but at the same time, we were all hoping, all right, Le'Veon, let's see what you got. Let's do it. So when he first got in the game, I think his first game was a Broncos game. It was like, oh, okay, it's okay. And then when he kept getting in the games, it was like, oh. Then in the Chargers game, he got his touchdown. We were like, oh, yeah, let's go, Le'Veon Bell. But it was still a bit rough um, because he just – just didn't end up being a good fit. It wasn't a good match. Uh, and with Le'Veon Bell, and I had said this in a lot of the games that we saw, probably like every game that we saw with Le'Veon Bell. Um, every time he would touch the ball, it just felt like everything just slowed down, like slowed way down. And I would be like, oh, okay. And it would almost be scary, like if Le'Veon Bell would be behind the line of scrimmage, it'd be like, oh, man. Because we know he don't got that burst. And he's never been that type of running back to, to, with that burst like that. That's not his style. Uh, we know Le'Veon Bell, super, super, super patient. Very patient runner. And the type of runner he is, the offensive line in front of him, it, just, it has to be perfect. And we know Ravens' offensive line is far from perfect. I know we each are imperfect ourselves, but Ravens' offensive line, they way, way far away from perfect. Um, and they have just been struggling all year long run blocking pass protection oh my goodness uh, let me not even get started on that um but Le'Veon Bell just he never could quite get it going and I mean it sucks we, we love this energy love this energy because you could tell he he loved being back he loved being back he, he loved being with this team loved being with the Ravens of course like who wouldn't want to love being with the Ravens you got Lamar, you got Hollywood, like that. Just the vibe, man. The vibe is, is something serious. So you, you, are, you, you feel for Le'Veon Bell. Now, um, we do have a, a couple of questions, but before we uh, get to those questions, let's look at Le'Veon Bell, um, his, I guess, his departing words from the Baltimore Ravens. And, and it's, it's sad. It, it, it sucks to uh, see for him as a person. Um, Cause again, because you know he just loved it. Let's see what he said. He said, this hurts, but it's been a blessing to be here, to say the least. I've enjoyed every second of this short period, and I got a whole new meaning of what this city is like, and it's a great place to be. I appreciate Eric DaCosta. Oh, he spelled DaCosta's name wrong. Um, but anyway, I appreciate Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh for the opportunity to be called a raven. And hey, it's straight up like that. And again, like I said, you could tell, you could like this guy once was at the top of the food chain when it came to be a, being a running back. He was once one of the best running backs in the league, and now he got cut. Again, he got cut from the Jets. And then the Chiefs were like, "Ah, uh, no, it's not working out." Got an opportunity with the Ravens, and it all came crashing down. Just like that. And I'm I, like straight up, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm surprised. I would have never seen this coming. Never. Never. I ever would have never would have seen this coming. Not at all. But Ravens, they made a move that they felt was best. Now, two things. One, this lets me know uh, that Latavius Murray, he's ready. He's back. That's what this lets me know. It lets me know that Latavius Murray is ready for action. It's like, all right, Latavius, you are officially up. You're healthy again. You're back. Now, another two questions that we have. Um, Tyson Williams, Nate McCrary. Now, with Tyson Williams, the Ravens have shown recently, like, no, we do not feel in Tyson Williams. Tyson Williams is not our guy. Tyson Williams, uh, no, uh-uh. 
You could tell like they they are not on Tyson Williams vibe. He's not on theirs. They, mm -mm. but he's still there. He's still there. And like I had the Ravens release Tyson Williams, that wouldn't have been a shocker. Then releasing Le'Veon Bell, this is a shocker. So maybe this for me personally, this gives me just a tiny bit of hope, a tiny bit of hope. For the Ravens and Tyson Williams this season. Past this season, certainly not. But it gives me a tiny bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, they'll give him a shot. Maybe. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, they also have Nate McCrary on the practice squad. Uh, he was, of course, with the Ravens in the preseason, and he looked good. He looked good. But there just wasn't enough room for him. Um, Tyson Williams was the other running back in preseason who looked good. They kept him, but Nate McCrary, they let him go. He went to the Broncos, spent a little bit of time there. Uh, then the Broncos cut him, and the Ravens said, hey, come on back. Come on back. We missed you. We got to get you out of there. So I, I just I wonder if it'll be Tyson that gets the call or it'll be Nate McCrary that gets the call up. To the active roster now that a roster spot is freed um but this <laughs> like who would have thought a tuesday morning would start like this with Le'Veon bill getting cut like that's just it, it, it it's, it's wild it's wild but i do um i respect it i i, I respect it not even just because i'm a ravens fan but well, being a Ravens fan helps because you, you saw you, you, you saw that it just it, it was not clicking. It wasn't clicking. It, it wasn't working out. And we had talked about for weeks the Ravens just force feeding Bell. When Devontae Freeman, he would be getting in the groove and then they'd be like, oh, all right, let me on Bell. Come on, come on, come on. And I understand you want to try it out. And I understand you, you really want it to work out. Trust me, I get it. But if it's not working, it's not working. So I do respect the Ravens' decision to go ahead and make the tough move and make the tough call. Because I know the Ravens were hoping. I know they were hoping, like, all right, we, we know Jets, they're not the best organization. They, they're not the best run organization. Uh, and we know the Chiefs, they're not a run-heavy team. So maybe we can really get something great out of Le'Veon. We know he got something left. We know he got something left. And this is not to say that he doesn't. But just the Ravens situation and Le'Veon, it just, this year, no. Uh-uh. This year, it just was not working. It wasn't working. So with it not working and the season, like, literally on the line, and you're still obviously in the thick of things, Ravens are 6-3 and three right now. So they're in a good spot. So this is why I, I, I respect the move because the relationship just, it, it, it just wasn't a good fit again. So mm, that is like, I'm, I'm still in shock. I, I'm, I'm really in shock. I'm not, I'm not and, and what gets me is that I'm not in shock that Le'Veon Bell was cut. I'm shocked that the Ravens cut Le'Veon Bell. And I know some people, oh, what that, that doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about, man? That doesn't make any kind of sense. What do you mean? I'm just shocked that Ravens actually made the move. They made a move where they had made a decision early in the season. They brought this guy on and they saw hey, it, it wasn't working, even though they really wanted it to work. But they actually put their pride to the side and they cut him. They put the pride to the side. They put the name to the side. They said, wait a minute. This is not a good fit for our football team. Especially because our offensive line. Like, had Ravens had the, the 2019 offensive line, even though they were a little bit overrated. But had they had that offensive line, or much better offensive line, Le'Veon Bell, I think he would have done so much better. So with Le'Veon Bell being a free agent, well, he got to go through waivers first. Um, but if he can go to a team that has a great offensive line, he will be just fine. He'll be just fine. But they got to have a great offensive line. They really got to be able to hold up for Le'Veon Bell uh, to succeed. 
So we'll see what happens. So again, now all of our focus turns on, all right, Ravens, so what now? So what do you do now? Um, they should be practicing tomorrow because uh, tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, and again, like I said, this gives me an indicator that Latavius Murray is healthy. But say, for instance, say, for instance, worst case scenario, if he's not healthy, then, oh, that's bold by the Ravens. So now if, if he's not healthy, then they would have to. You have to go to Tyson or you have to go to Nate McCurry. You have to if he's not healthy. But we just got to wait it out and see what goes down. So, man, won't be ringing the bells anymore, man. Won't be ringing the bells. That was uh, It was exciting when we got Le'Veon Bell. It was exciting when we got Dez Bryant the previous year. Um, but Dez Bryant, I don't even think with him, I don't even think it was so much a bad fit. It was just he wasn't used. And, I mean, it was kind of hard to use him. He came in the middle of a season um, and would have to learn the offense and all that good stuff. But um, So it didn't work out with him for different reasons. But with Le'Veon Bell, it just... Yeah, never materialize into uh, anything significant as we all hoped uh, that it would. So, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And just like Le'Veon Bell is now, when it comes to being with the Ravens, I'm out. <laughs>